Grace and peace to you in Jesus' name. I'm, I'm Pastor Todd Stepp, and I want to share with you an exciting thing that my wife Bobby and I have been praying about, discerning uh, about what God is maybe leading us to. So for a number of years, I've had a vision about a possible church plan. It's never quite been the right time. God hasn't brought those pieces together, but, but we are praying right now as to whether this might be the time for this new church plan. So I want to share with you a little bit about this, this vision of a church that I have. There are six components to this church. Um, the first is it is committed to a warm-hearted evangelical faith. And so that term warm-hearted comes from uh, John Wesley's Aldersgate experience where he had been praying and, and there he had his heart strangely warmed and he knew that Christ had died to save him from his sins. And so we believe that we can have a real dynamic living personal relationship with the Lord. And so this is a church that's committed not just to an intellectual head knowledge of the faith, but is committed to a real living relationship, a, a warm-hearted evangelical faith. Second, it's committed to holiness of heart and life. We believe that God not only wants to forgive us of our sins, but God wants to be so at work within us that he is transforming us so that we begin to reflect the very image of God as seen in Jesus. God wants to sanctify us entirely through and through. He wants to fill us with his love so that we can love the Lord our God with all of our heart, soul, mind, and strength and love our neighbor as ourselves. Third, a church that is committed to authentic and engaging worship of God. Worship that is future-oriented while being in continuity with the scriptures and the early church and that is firmly rooted in reason and that cultivates a real living dynamic experience of the presence and the identity of God. Worship that combines the, the rich liturgical and sacramental expressions of the Wesleys and Anglicanism and the early church and, and also combines that with that warm-hearted evangelical faith and the freedom and the power and the spontane spontaneity of the Holy Spirit. Fourth, a church that is committed to personal faith sharing. So what we find in scripture is that the church gathered to worship on the Lord's day, but when they went forth, they went forth to share faith in word, deed, and sign. And so a church that's committed to being involved in ministry and sharing faith. The fifth commitment is a commitment to a network of discipleship and covenant accountability groups. This was at the heart of the dynamic of the early Methodist revival in England and the spread in America as, as John Wesley led that great evangelical revival that, that transformed England and began that spread here in America as well. So a commitment to a network of discipleship and covenant accountability groups. And six, finally, a commitment to compassionate ministries. We want to be those who give that cup of cold water to those who are thirsty. This was at the heart of, of John Wesley's ministry. It was at the heart of Phineas Brzee, the founder of the Church of the Nazarene, and his ministries. It's a, it's a part of who we are. And so those six dynamic commitments, uh, a scripture verse that has been really a foundational verse, a life verse for me, and a foundation for this vision comes from Jeremiah 6, 16, and it says this, thus says the Lord, stand at the crossroads and look and ask for the ancient paths where the good way lies and walk in it and find rest for your souls. That really is the kind of vision that I have for this church. It's the kind of church that, that uh, seeks to walk those ancient paths into a dynamic new future. In fact, one of the terms that could be used to describe this church is a term that was popularized by the late Robert Weber. Uh, he had a, a series of books that used this term in their title, Ancient Future. He had ancient future worship, ancient future time, ancient future uh, evangelism, um, ancient future faith. And, and this idea of ancient future, it's a great concept that, like Jeremiah 6.16, reminds us that if we want more than just the next big fad 
or uh, a new hip ministry that this that that's uh, you know here today and and maybe is outdated tomorrow then we need to get back to the ancient paths where we find the living God at work enlivening, strengthening, guiding, and directing his people in the power of the Holy Spirit. So there are a number of ways to, to talk about this kind of church. And as time goes by, I probably will shoot a number of, of short videos for, for each one of these descriptions and post them on the Facebook page that uh, I'm developing. But but to give you just kind of an idea, the church could be described as ancient future. It could be described as a three streams church. And I've already mentioned those three streams, the, the stream of the liturgical sacramental worship, uh, the, the stream of an evangelical faith. So a faith that is centered on the word of God and has real personal relationship with God. And then the third stream is what I would call the spirit filled uh, um, stream where God's spirit is alive and well and at work within the church. It could be described as Wesleyan Anglican. So the Church of the Nazarene is a Wesleyan holiness expression of Methodism. And so all of the Methodist uh, tradition and the Wesleyan holiness tradition finds its roots in John Wesley. But, but what's happened in a, in a lot of the Methodist and Wesleyan tradition is that we have latched on to uh, particular aspects of, of John Wesley's theology and spirituality, but we've kind of let other aspects of that go by the wayside. And so what we're looking for here is something that embraces all of that because it all fits together and builds upon each other. One that is committed to that evangelical faith and holiness of heart and life, but also that foundation that John Wesley found in the rich uh, liturgy and the sacramental understanding of worship. So Wesleyan Anglican, or it could be described as an Acts 242 church. And I'll let you look up Acts 242. And like I said, maybe I'll shoot a video about that at another time. So what am I asking of you? Well, first I'm asking that you pray. Pray that uh, we will know if this is the direction God is leading now. Pray if it is that God will bring those pieces together and God would raise up a number of people to be a part of the core group for this new church plan. Um, second, some of you are already faithfully a part of a local church where God has placed you and called you. Uh, and we pray God's blessings upon you. But there may be some of you who are watching this who are not. Uh, with all that, that COVID has done, some of you have become disconnected and maybe it's time to be reconnected. Some of you may have already been sensing that God has been calling you to something new, some new ministry. This might be that. Uh, perhaps there are those who have a, a liturgical and sacramental background, but you grew up in that, but you never really came to a, a personal faith in Christ until you left that and you came into more of an evangelical tradition and you encountered Jesus in a real personal way. And yet there are times whenever you miss some of that liturgical depth and some of that sacramental worship. Well, this might be exactly the kind of thing that would resonate with you. And the reverse of that might be true as well. You've had a real personal relationship with the Lord, but, but you've come to see the richness of the, the Christian year and the symbolism uh, that's found in the, the liturgy and the, the grace that's found in the sacraments. Again, this might be exactly what you're looking for. So if you want to learn more about this or you want to talk with me, have questions about this, uh, you think that maybe you want to be a part of this new church plant, message me. Message me on Facebook or comment or um, you can text or call or email me and talk with me about that. Third, share this with others. Um, those that, that you think might resonate with this vision, share with them. Family, friends, co-workers, neighbors, maybe new people who have moved in. Perhaps you've invited some of these to, to join with you in your own church setting, but but they didn't seem to feel like they fit there. Maybe they would fit with this kind of church plan. So point them in our direction. And I look forward to hearing from some of you as we prayerfully seek God's direction as to whether this might be the time to launch this new work. 
Uh, I invite you to find out more about this plant in the days and the weeks ahead uh, on our Facebook page. It's entitled Ancient Faith Church of the Nazarene. May God's blessings be with you.